be a perfect coder. I have a folder called class. And generate project. Find your project. Open your Xcode file. Okay. So, one nice Xcode trick that I like, um, and I do recommend you do that, is clicking this little button right here. This is called a tuxedo mode. And this allows you to see two files at once. So, if you click on OFF.cdp, usually um, the, the default, in the default, it's going to be saying counterparts here. If it doesn't say, you can just click on this and just choose counterparts from this menu. And by counterparts, it means that when you're coding C++, if you click on the class, which is a .cpp, it will automatically show the header file right here. And they're both editable at the same time. So you can header file your, your variables here in the header, and then you can do all your fancy code here in the CPP file. Are we all comfortable with Xcode? We remember, okay. Cool. So, starting with a moving ball, and as you may have guessed, we're gonna make a moving ball. Um, starting by declaring two variables to position this ball within the space. So, we're gonna make those floats, and have them call something easy to remember, such as position or pause x and pause y. Can you see? Is it too small? It's a little bit too small, isn't it? Uh, no? It's okay. It's okay, yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, no. Make it a bit bigger. Just a little bigger. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I guess actually we all are closer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, also. The Wi-Fi password. I know I'm being stupid, oh. but I've tried what I think were all the permutations. It's number three, number three, number three, and then we can two Oh, yeah, that's too good. good. We're doing it in binary. <laughs> yeah. Um, we 
got our position x, our position y, and we're going to make another two variables to control the speed in which this little circle will be moving. And we're going to make those speed x and speed y. Cool. So, as we remember, most of our code when we're in the, these baby steps of open frameworks are going to live within these three functions, which are setup, update, and draw. Um, if you've worked with processing, um, you're familiar with setup and draw. And usually what this means is that whatever is in setup is going to run once in the beginning of your program, and whatever is in draw is going to run over and over in every frame. Open frameworks by default tries to run your sketch as fast as possible. So it's going to try to do 120 frames a second. You can change that and choose the frame rate. The only thing you have to have in mind is that draw will be called once per frame. Update actually does the exact same thing as draw in terms of code. So it actually it also, it also runs once per frame. And then you ask me, why are there two functions? It's because in update, you're going to update your variables. In draw, you're actually going to put things in the screen. And it doesn't make a lot of sense in the kind of code that we're going to be doing now, but once you become super kick-ass creative coders and you start coding things that have a thousand lines, you're going to be like, I'm so happy there's a place where I can work with my variables, and another place I can actually draw stuff, and it's good that they're separate. So with setup, um, within the setup, we're going to start by um, defining um, our initial position x and position y. So I'm going to call here something called OF get width, which we've seen in the other class. And what that does is take the width of the window that OF is going to fire up and return that value. So by default, the, the Open Frameworks window is 1024 by 768. So OF get width is going to return to you 1024. And we're going to multiply that by 0.5, which is the same thing as doing this. Divide by 2, multiply by 0.5. Funny fact about uh, C++ compiling, especially the Mac OS, multiplying is faster than dividing. So it's usually more co computer friendly to multiply things by decimals than dividing by two, for example. Is that it's faster? Does it just invert division to multiplication and then do multiplication? Can we get well when it's doing division, does it convert the division operation to multiplication? I cannot tell you the reason for sure. I can tell you it's faster um, multiplying. And of course you're not gonna see any difference whatsoever for a while. But just starting with good practices is a good thing to do. And we're going to do the same thing with position y. And with that right here. And we're going to be calling the left get height. And what that means is that position x and position y are going to be right in the middle of our window. If we run this thing, it does nothing. Glorious nothingness. It opens a glorious gray window. And because I do not understand why gray is a default value, I like to code my thing with a white background, 12 OF background, call 255, and it's going to be white. When you call OF background, it's going to choose the color of the background of the OF window, and inside here, you can put either uh, an alpha value, which is going to give you a value of gray, from 0 to 255, 0 is black, 255 is white, or you could put an RGB value, um, let's say 255, 0, 0, and as we are all designers and or web developers, and we know that for sure, 5.00 in RGB is red. But let's keep with white because we're very minimal and elegant. Next, 
our little ball. Before we do that, let's go to draw. Sorry, I man, I just lost the explanation about why can you use a, a single value. So, if you if you type in start typing in next go go at the background, you're gonna see all of the, the values that it, it accepts. So you can either run it with three values for R, G, and V, which are three integers from 0 to 255. You could run it with only one integer, and it's going to be brightness. So it's going to be like a shade of gray, from 0 to 255. 0 is black, 255 is white. And then there's other things. You, there's a constant called OF color. So you can define a color object in open frameworks and then pass that to your background and so on. For now, we're happy right now. Let's draw an nice OF circle right here. In our positioning, we want it to be position X and position Y. And let's give you a nice radius of 20. And if we run this, we see nothing. And we see nothing because by default, much like the window is background is gray, the default color for drawing of the frameworks is white. So let's set the color to black. For the sad colors, the same thing, you can set with the brightness or you can set it with the RGB value. And now if you run it, still nothing. Hmm. Yeah, good. Just sort of the 
Huh? Just run away? Yeah. So the problem we have now is that our circle is moving and then it's going to the void and never coming back again. So what we need to tell our circle is when you find one of the edges, you should bounce back. So you're always within the screen. And then we're going to do if statement. So this is what I was talking about, a little bit of review. Is this going too slow? But like, do you want, you can shake it up, make it more exciting. Good? No. Not basic. Not basic. A bit slow. No. Compiler was just a bit slow. Yeah. Was just a bit slow here. Yeah. No, no, I'm just asking, am I going too slow? Do you want me to go faster? This is good. I'll, I'll just keep going. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like your face, please. Yeah. Huh? I like your face, personally. Oh, okay. It's okay because we have to pull the right side. Very powerful. I like my face as it is right now, too. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable with it. All right, if statement. So in this if statement, we want to make a condition here that says, if our ball hits one of the edges, it should bounce back. So there's two concepts we need to understand here. Our position is varying according to our speed. So we have a position x here. It's right in the middle of the screen. We have a speed x here. Let's say it's minus 2. If it's this random run uh, returns minus 2, it's going to be here, and then it's going to start moving backwards, right? If this thing is, run, is returning 2, it's going to move forward, right? So this is why when we run this program, it, it will go different directions in each time. So what do we want to tell our program here? If the position x is less, or equals to zero, or now this thing is one of the most useful C++ notations you can have in your life. It's called an or. And when you're putting in conditionals, an or means you can put another condition. So what are we telling our code here? If the position x is less than 0, or if it's more than the width, you should do something about it so that our ball does not escape the screen. And what should you do? You're going to take our speed x and multiply it by minus 1. is that, let's say our position here is 500, let's say we have a window of 1,000, it's going to be 500, then it's going to go up, 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 800, 815, 800, 1,000, because our speed is positive. When it reaches the edge of the screen, it's going to multiply the speed by minus 1. And when it does that, it's, it's going to start adding a negative number. So it's going to start going the other way. So we want to do the same thing for our position y. Position y, position y. Our position y is actually relative to the height. So it should say we have get height here, not we have get width. And we want to multiply with our speed y by minus 1. Press command r. Command r is the shortcut for running code. And glorious. It's now bouncing in the edges of the window. So conditionals are good things to tell you use to tell your code to do what it's supposed to do. So if your code is not doing something that you want it to do, conditional will say, well, well you're going to pass in a test, and it's going to test it every single frame. And once the test is true, it's going to run a little bit of code to fix whatever you're trying to fix. Are we happy so far? Great. 
So let's close this Xcode window. This was our little um, revision. Fire up Project Generator again. Is everyone's code running? Yeah? Should I did I did I close it too fast? No, it's fine. It's just my computer's older than Yeah, I think it's just a slow compilation. Oh. It's because Xcode is a gigantic memo flying yeah. four gigs IDE. I don't understand why it needs to be so big. Because it has to do everything? Except Java. Uh, I said except Java. They don't want to do that. Yeah, it puts also on the mod ID. I don't know. Okay. What was it? Project Generator. Two. And we're going to call this one Pulsating Circle. Okay, generate your project, find it in Finder, fire it up in Xcode. We're going to be doing a lot of wash, rinse, repeat in this class, so that we get used to the practice of defining our variables in the headers, updating them in our updates, putting the first definition in setup. So, Let's do that again. It's going to make a float, position x, position y. And now we're going to have a float size. We're going to define our position x as OF get with position y equals OF get height times 5, we're going to make our nice background um, white again, and we're going to make our circle, position x, position y, and the radius is going to be size. Oops. Size. Yep. We're going to define size here in setup as zero for right now. And we're going to put our OF set color right here. So remember to draw a black circle. And in here, we're going to put size plus plus. Size plus plus, is everyone really one comfortable with that notation? Okay, no. Size plus plus means you're adding one to whatever your value is. So our size starts at zero. So every time it runs update, it's going to add one. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, one. And this is why C plus plus is called C plus plus. It's, it's an inside programmer's <laughs> joke. It's supposed to be C2, C++. Oh, really? Huh? Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a good joke. It's a good joke. <laughs> it, it, it's like the, the PHP fractal. You know that one? I think so. Yeah. PHP stands for hypertext. PHP hypertext protocol. Yeah. What does the PHP stand for? PHP hypertext protocol. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, we can laugh now. Um, Run it. Oh, glory to the growing, growing circle. And it's going to grow forever until it occupies the whole screen and it can go anywhere, anywhere. It's eventually going to do that, but not yet. So let's, for example, growing stroke. And it disappeared again. Right under our background, 
let's set our background to not automatically update. So this is open frameworks function call OF set background auto, and you pass in uh, the value of false. It defaults to true. So if you say false, it is not going to run the background in every draw loop. It's going to run once here, and because you set it to false, it's going to be like, okay, whatever is drawn to the screen stays on the screen forever. Let's run it again. And then it starts getting interesting. And then we can finally start to see some pattern, art, whatever you want to call it. It's bigger. Pen. Beautiful. Now, let's play with something else called the circle resolution. real low number, like 5. And we're going to go a little bit like into the roots of OpenGL right now. Open Frameworks is just a nice framework to interface with OpenGL. And what OpenGL does is that it takes the plus plus code, passes it to the graphics card, and the graphics card, what it does best is drawing triangles. It's like, when it sees triangles, it's like, God, I'm happy. This is what I know how to do. And if you set the circle resolution to 5, you're going to notice really quick that our circle is just a bunch of triangles. See? And if we set the circle resolution to 5, it runs much faster than it did before because it's drawing 5 triangles to the GPU. Instead of moving forward, uh, we're going to take a short break. Let this feeling sink in. Be happy with it. And we're going to start movement in 10 minutes. All right. <laughs> Fire project generator, pick a cool name, I'll call mine 3, translate, and rotate. Cool. Go to finder, uh, figure out why that was created, open up the project. So, translate and rotate. Um, the way these things work is that So the OF window is like a canvas, right? Do not call it a canvas because it's wrong. It's just like a canvas. And usually in these sort of programming canvases, 0, 0 is up here. here, and Y is here. This is usually a little bit confusing because we're accustomed to see these axes like this. It's not how it works in programming. High, maximum height is over here, zero is over here. And it's done this way because this is how 
the, the, the graphics card actually draws pixels to the screen. It actually starts over here and then draws line by line until it gets over here. Um, so translating is taking this point and putting it elsewhere. So you take this matrix, this is actually what it's called, and you move it to a part of the screen. And let's say you move it here. Let's say this point is 20, and this point is 8. So now, 0, 0 is going to be here. And the axis is are going to go like this. Although, your window is still here. So if you draw something on 0, 0 after translating your matrix to 20 and 8, it's going to be drawn over here. And if you draw it in minus 10 and 0, which means 0, now it's not 20 anymore. Now 0 is here, right? Minus 10 and 0, now 0 is over here. This is where it's going to show up. And this is important for many, many reasons. But one of the reasons we're going to see now is that when you want to rotate the, um, the most common shapes in open frameworks, it rotates from this point. So let's say you all know the nice web rectangle. It looks like this. And you want to make it look like this. And you want it to be right here. So what you're going to do is that you're going to translate your matrix to here, and then you're going to tell it to rotate 30 degrees. And then your matrix is going to start looking like this. Here is going to be 0, 0. X is going to be growing that way. And Y is going to be growing this way. And when you draw your rect at 0, 0, it's going to be drawn like this. Don't worry because all of this can be undone. So, let's see how this works in code. So, first thing, we're going to come here to our draw loop and do a, tr sorry, not a translate. Getting ahead of myself here. OF rect, zero, zero. 50, 50, and just because we like it, uh, background, 255, OF, set, color, So now let's translate this thing. So we have translate. And let's translate it to the middle of the screen. So we already know how to do that. Translate with times 0.5. We get times times 0.5. And let's write again. Sure enough, now it's drawn to the middle of the screen. It looks a little bit skewed this way. It's because by default, the OF rectangle is drawn from here. So it starts here, 0, 0, and then it's going to draw it this way. We can change that by setting the rectangle mode in open framework, which is OF set rect mode, OF rect mode center this, run it, there we go. 
Now, I'm happy with this part of the code. But now I want to draw another rectangle there. Actually, no. Let's rotate it to this little fella before. Let's rotate it. Go F. Rotate. Actually, rotate needs to be the after translate. Go F. Rotate. 30. You can ignore the other variables for now. It's because you can rotate things in all in, in uh, all three axes of a of 3D space. By default, it's going to rotate in the Z axis. And if I run it, there's a nice little rotating rectangle. Now, I want to draw a regular rectangle here. And I don't want it to be rotated. But, if I come here and I say OF rect and I put it, let's say, in 50 and 50, which would not normally be in this region of the window, and give it a width and a height of 30 and 30, and I run it, it's going to look like this. It moved the matrix all the way over here, and then it rotated the matrix by 30 degrees, and unless you tell it to go back to normal, it's going to draw every object from now on in this translated and rotated matrix. And the way you do to avoid this is that you do an OF push matrix and an OF pop matrix. And of course, the pop matrix needs to be after you just do this to let me see what the code is inside. So what we're doing here is that we're pushing the matrix. In this case, it's pushing the default matrix, right? The matrix we use to join. And then it's going to translate and rotate and draw everything you want to draw in a different matrix. And then it's going to pop back to the default matrix and then draw the second rectangle. So if I run this thing now, it looks like this. Like it should. Make sense? But the cool thing is that you can translate and rotate as many times as you like, right? So you can translate something over here and then rotate it and then translate it again over here and then rotate it again. And then I'll actually propose a 10 minute exercise. Not 10 minutes. I'll give you a little more if you need, but ideally 10 minutes. Don't look at the example code. But try to make this. Mm. Using translation and rotation. <laughs> All right, um, so let's fire up our friend Project Generator and do four, make a project called Orbits.
think about the system. There are three circles. One of them does not move. So we're actually playing with the position of two of them. And we actually know that we're doing that using translations and rotations. So we actually, we only have the x distance from a particular point, and what we're actually going to change is it, it's the object's rotation in relation to that point, right? So I have my, my origin here, I'm going to draw a circle here, and when I, when I rotate my matrix, it's going to rotate with it, right? So one important thing to know is that the draw loop has a built-in potion pop matrix and style in it. So you don't, if all your code is going to be inside a different matrix, you don't need to start with potion and pop in it inside the draw loop. So let's start by making our three circles. Circle, zero, zero, and fifty. We'll have circle, fifty, hmm, let's see, a hundred, let's say two fifty. Two fifty, zero, and thirty. And then I'll have circle, um, 100, um, let's see, 350 actually, 0, and 10. And if I run it, there they are. And they look awful because we didn't change the color. <laughs> background 255. Website color 0. So, our first thing we got to do is bring all these circles to the middle of the screen where they should be in the first place. So, we're going to do an OF translate. And we're going to do web get width, and we're going to multiply it by 0.5, and we're going to do web get height, and we're going to multiply it by 0.5, and we did this translation, right? So all of our system is going to be moved from over here to over here. Run the code. Beautiful. We already have our planets, moons, whatever you want to call them, and sort of the alignment that they should have, right? So the first, first part of the system we want to move is this one, right? So if instead of having it... Um, the x position of it um, 